It's your boy. Foot kicking. Your coach. Of the Philadelphia Flygons. Um. My webcam is still shit. Put them in my college dorm. Um. Got the lights on. And we are in 11th place now because we had a buy and got a free win. That's tough. But I still haven't killed the mom in three weeks. Hopefully we can do that this week. But I want to let you know we're in the college dorm, but it, at least the HDL is still coming. It's been busy. It's been crazy. But I will be getting the videos out as as much as I like physically can. I'm trying, but I got homework to juggle, a social life to juggle. So it's a little bit difficult. But I'm excited to at least finish the HDL out this season. Hopefully on a high note. The goal this week is to kill a single month. One. If I kill one month, I'm I'm satisfied. So just wanted to give you a little bit of an update. I'm in the dorm. I'm chilling. I moved in all safe. It's been about a week now. But without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> What's up? I already did the intro, so I don't gotta worry about saying it again. But I'm gonna do it again. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Flip Kiki here, your coach of the Philadelphia Flygons. We are in 11th place. We are 3 and 5 with a really bad differential. I don't even want to know what it is. We have not killed him on in three weeks now, technically. Lost 6 0 to Sandy. Last week, or two weeks ago now, we lost 6 0 to Tyler. Check that video out in the top right. Probably one of the best edits in HDL history. But, you know. I still lost 6-0. Got swept by a fucking Reggie Steel. And then I had to buy last week, so I actually ended up with a free win. But now, I'm facing Clay, who, as you can see, I've never lost to, actually. Head-to-head 3-0 -head with differential of plus 8, which is pretty sick. A 3-0 win in Season two, season 1 Week 2, 2-0 win in the Mimi Bronze game, and last season, a 3-0 win in Week 3. Check that video out as well. He is rocking a 6-2 record right now and currently in third place, I believe, with Jirachi, Amoongus, Nidoqueen, Salazzle, Golbat, Alcremi, Mega Slowbro, Gyarados, Hydragon, Haunter, and Hitmonlee. He has made an obscene amount of free agency transactions and, like, three trades. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff, but all of the moves he's made have pretty much worked. Um, if you can notice, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 five poison types on his team so that's definitely something to keep in mind and as you can notice no rillaboom and no mega beedrill this week um and no dewblade with all the with all the poison types surprisingly but we do have a new team member i will start with him we got do his thing the duraludon tyrantrum has been dropped uh tyrantrum it was just a physical mon after last week i realized i have a dire lack of special attacking threats and i just needed a special attacker i still needed a dragon type it was either duraldon or drampa duraldon provided more defensive utility which my team also needed so i went duraldon it also got rocks which supplemented the l loss of rocks i'd be getting or loss of a second rocker when i lose tyrantrum um i guess i'll start with this because this is probably one of the lamest sets i have it is mixed i have draco and Stomping Tantrum. Stomping Tantrum is for mostly Salazzle. It can also hit Nidoqueen if I need to. It can also hit Jirachi. Uh, it's mostly for Jirachi. Even if Jirachi is on and in on this thing, the a funny play I could go for since I have Stealth Rock. If I've, I do have Stealth Rocks already up, I can click it again if I think something's going to switch in. And then, I, and then Stomping Tantrum will do double damage afterwards. So that's an interesting tech I could utilize. I will probably not. We're running Lax Nature since this thing is... I'm not going to be switching this thing into special hits. This is a pure defensive wall. It's for chip. So wear things down to get its rocks up, sub, and to get the fuck out. It's just going to be wearing things down with Stomping Tantrum. Things that can't recover the health. Um, if I notice that Jirachi is in a Witch set, this is very important. The problem is this thing loses the special Nido Queen very easily. What doesn't lose the special Nido Queen very easily is my Rotom. I'm rocking Chesto because if Amoongus tries to sleep this thing, it doesn't sleep this thing. I get an overheat off on it free or anything it's going to switch into. I can also Wisp the Amoongus to constantly chip it. Obviously, Volt Switch since it's a Rotom. And I do have Pain Split as well. Pain Split is going to be useful again. Scarf Needle Queen is a problem. Scarf Needle Queen 
doesn't have recovery. So if I can be pain splitting and Starf Needle Queen wearing it down, even Will O Wisping it, or Will O Wisping a big threat, maybe like High Dragon or even Mega Slowbro, since I'm not really running Toxic since he has so many poison types. It's going to be very useful to whittle things down with Wisp and Pain Split, be switching in and out with Volt Switch. Needle Queen is his only ground type I need to worry about. Overheat will just be doing big damage, spreading it around. This thing's a important pivot, but I need to use Pain Split wisely to recover health since I'm not running lefties. Those are my two main defensive mons. Uh, another utility mon I have that's also meant to do a little bit of crippling is Floatzel. It's Flame Worm Switcheroo, finally. I'm able to run it. Again, this thing is a problem. Preferably, I can Flame Orb Golbat. Now, if I get the Flame Orb Switcheroo on Golbat, Golbat is now extremely frail, and I have its Evil Light. You may be wondering, oh, Evil Light's useless now. Well, if Golbat switches out, I can now switch over the Evil Light onto anything else on his team that can't use it. I will just be able to switch her and cripple. So I can cripple two mons if I end up getting the switch her and Golbat, which would be absolutely huge. I also have Ice Punch for Golbat when it's crippled. Ice Punch also for Hydragon. But Liquidation is also just going to do a lot of damage spread around when I'm not obviously Flame Orb because Water Veil, I won't be Flame Orb. Roar is if things are scary and the switch them out probably into rocks, take more burn damage, or just in on something you know a little bit better that floats doesn't want to be in on floats was an interesting utility pick here um i could have maybe just run b instead of this but i was feeling floats floats also deals with needle queen decently it usually is going to take a hit but this will outspeed needle queen if it's not scarfed so yeah i mean i just ran max attack max speed i don't really need this thing to do anything else because have some interesting utility maybe grab a kill or two not having aqua jet is scaring me a little bit but he should be okay because he's fast enough and Tailwind. Tailwind Halucha. End with Defog. So Utility Halucha is what I'm going with here. Max HP, max speed. Eject button actually works this time. Because if Halucha, will, which will outspeed literally everything on his team. This outspeeds every single non-scarfer on his team. If I get a Tailwind up, something hits Halucha. Halucha gets a free switch into my two attacking threats that I obviously have not gone to yet. Which is huge. Defog, it can defog and get the fuck out on revenge kill. Like, and with the max HP, it should be able to live most things. It has a shocking amount of HP now, 359. 78 base HP is nothing to scoff at. And 75 defense is either sp spadef. Could be worse. It's also got Brave Bird just to do big damage. Brave Bird does a confident 50% to Amoongus. Brave Bird will do big damage to Hitmonlee. Bra Brave Bird will do big damage to literally everything on his team except Jirachi. Again, good chip. I have max HP. I can take a couple hits. U-turn as well to pivot. If I'm trying to pivot, maybe bluff with Halucha a little bit. Make him think I have moves that I don't have. If I click Brave Bird early or U-turn early, he'll think it's a scarier set. And then I get the Tailwind off. And then I start doing serious damage with either Gothitelle or Mudsdale. Mudsdale's the good set. Gothitelle. Um, if he has a lot of poison types, and I have a psychic type, I bring the psychic type. I know it seems a little stupid. He's probably going to prep for it. He knows what he's doing. But a Calm Mind Life Orb Gothitelle in this situation is very dumb. What I can also guarantee is because I'm running competitive, Gyarados will not be switching on this or Gyarados will be Moxie because he will be afraid of the competitive Gothitelle. So I'm running competitive. Psychic, obviously for Stab, Signal Beam, and Thunderbolt are literally all the coverage I need. The only thing this thing can't really hit too well is Jirachi. Everything else, it can hit very reliably. Signal Beam is mostly for High Dragon. A Dragon Dance High Dragon is very scary in this matchup. I've tried to prep the best I could for it. It also has Calm Mind. Uh, a Calm Mind in Tailwind basically wins me the game because I'll have like three turns to kill basically anything I want. And then I might be able to sweep from there. This thing can probably just also kill things straight up. That speed outspeeds a Scarf, Needle Queen, in Tailwind. Um, that's the magic number. I forget if Mudsdale's hitting that. I forget what Mudsdale... Mudsdale's outspeeding certain things in Tailwind. Um, this thing naturally outspeeds no max speed. Or a non-speed invested Needle Queen. But also outspeeds a max speed Needle Queen in Tailwind perfectly, which is great. And it will obviously Oko with Psychic unless it's like Assault Vest, but in that case I outspeed. It probably can't kill a Gothitelle in one hit since Gothitelle's got pretty good natural spadef and I'm running a bunch of HP in it. So this thing is hopefully going to be the one doing most of the kills or Mudsdale's going to come in and nuke things. Max defense, max HP, 
plus defense nature Nido Queen gets Okoed 100% of the time from banded max attack adamant Muzdale Earthquake. Do what you will with that. This thing hits like an absolute fucking truck, and I'm scared. Payback because I'm slow as shit, and it also hits Jirachi. Speaking of Jirachi, the, the thing that you would probably deal with, a slow mon, is Jirachi, because you'll outspeed, you'll flinch it. Inner focus, baby. I'm not running stamina, I'm running inner focus. I'm not getting flinch hacks by this. And if Gyarados comes in to try and neuter the Mudsdale, no intimidate, because it's also immune to intimidate with an inner focus, which is crazy. I could run own tempo as well, but I'm definitely more worried about Iron Head flinches or Air Slash flinches than I am about getting confused. Payback, again, does damage to Jirashi if he hits me first. Also does damage to Slowbro if Slowbro's outspeeding me. I doubt he will be. Uh... Payback is kind of just the niche thing for Jirachi to hit the funny move on Jirachi to finish it. It's also still for Slowbro, though, if he ran speed and Slowbro for some reason. CC, big damage. Rock Slide, big damage. Earthquake, big damage. Mostly just coverage. Um, so this will definitely be coming in in Tailwind. This thing can also probably live at least one hit and nuke something and get rid of it. But that's about all it's going to do. I lack recovery on a decent amount of Mons. I have recovery on Duraludon. I don't have it on this. Not in this, not in this, not in this. And I have Pain Split here. Um, Chesto is literally only for Amoongus if he tries to sleep me, sleep the Rotom, which is a very, very smart thing to do. Sleep the Rotom, because then you get a free switch. Rotom can't switch, and then you set up. Chesto, you cannot sleep me. If he also gets... I mean, some other mons could run sleep moves. If he runs, like, tries some weird Hypnosis Dream Eater set on Haunter, it could also prove useful. But I'm mostly worried about Spore on Amoongus. If he doesn't bring it, well, I have a Chesto Berry just in case something goes wrong. Uh, the only other item I'd probably run on this is lefties, so the item on this isn't too imperative, saying that I'll probably end up regretting it later, but this team's a little interesting, um, but I don't see how I can't get a kill with this unless something goes really wrong. Uh, lead is probably Rotom, it can also be Halucha. Um, Halucha outspeeds every single non-scarfer on his team, and some other mons that are scarfed, it can still outspeed naturally. U-turn uh, is probably the play, or even if I see the opportunity, I can Tailwind. Turn one, go right into this, and try and sweep. If I see the opportunity, if he brings a team very weak to Gothitelle. Uh, but again, the lead is definitely either Photo Hall, Lucha, or Rotom. My three faster mons. It's interesting, but I had fun making this team. It's a little interesting. There's still some tech going on. Again, the goal is kill a mon. <laughs> if I make the goal that attainable... I should be able to snowball from there and have a good game. So, without further ado, let's get into the battle. Okay. Okay, okay, we are here. A couple interesting threats are not here. Mainly Mega Slowbro, Gyarados, and High Dragon are the normal things that aren't here. Alchemy also is not here. But, I mean, that Jirachi does scare me. Oh, uh, let's just look here. Um... What things can't he guard against? Uh, Mudstail definitely has a good time. Uh, at least against three of his mods. Jirachi, Salazzle, and Nidoqueen do not like Mudstail at all. Um, if... Honestly? If Jirachi and Amoongus are dead, then Floatzel actually has a shot at cleaning. Um, also, he brought five poison types. Gothitelle does very well here in Tailwind if Jirachi's dead. Uh, even if Jirachi isn't dead, I have Signal Beam, but that's not going to kill a Jirachi. Uh, what things does he have that are a problem? Nidoqueen is always a problem. I mean, what do I have for Nidoqueen? I have... I have. It's just Nidoqueen's more about Whittle. If I can get Nidoqueen down without Jirachi wishing to it... Um, Scarf Jirachi or Scarf Nidoqueen first turn is a problem because Alucha gets hit. Um, I think Floatzel lead might actually be a little safer here because if he goes Nido Queen, that I can go Hard Rotom, I think. Well, what do I do against a Nido Queen lead here? Or even a fucking Salazzle lead? I think Floatzel is the better lead here. We're going to lead Floatzel. He led Golbat. That's actually perfect. This is the exact thing I wanted. Because I literally switch through the Flame Orb onto this thing. And it doesn't have an Eviolite anymore. Turn 1. Turn 1. 
Either way, something gets switcherooed. If, if he stays in on this, this is perfect. This is actually really good. I click switcheroo turn one here. Perfect. He doesn't have an Evia Light. He now has a Flame Orb. He's also using his own Tailwind, which is interesting. Now the question is, what's he going to try and bring into this Tailwind? Uh, this could be Jirachi coming into Tailwind. I could see that happening. Um, he could be staying in on his own Tailwind as well. Uh, he no longer has something to live an Ice Punch. Now, if Jirachi comes in for free, that's a problem. He can just start trying to set up. Um, I like just going Hard Rotom here. Hard Rotom scares this out. So, Hard Rotom... Because I think Jirachi coming in on Tailwind is a problem. It could start setting up. So, going for an Ice Punch here is not really the move because Rotom can deal with this anyway. So, I'm going to go Rotom. He U-turned. That's understandable. Uh, I probably outsped that. So, if I Ice Punch that, that thing was dead. But what does he bring in on Rotom? He does not have much to bring in on it. And Golbat is also pretty crippled. He can't bring in Jirachi now. Bringing in Jirachi is not a good idea. Bringing in Nidoqueen, there's not much he can do to a Nidoqueen either. But he brought in Haunter. Now my question is, what does this Haunter have for a Rotom? And my second question is, how much does Rotom overheat just due to a Haunter? It could just kill it if it's not EV light. If he's anything, like, if he's not Eviolite, Overheat just kills it. He might outspeed me, but I'm just gonna click Overheat. Reflect type, and I missed my Overheat. Bruh! You can't, bro. Like, what the fuck? If he was electric fire, how much was that doing? I was doing still I was still doing 50%. Now I have no clue what this thing is gonna do. I mean it still does 50%, and I can waste his tailwind. I'm just gonna overheat again. Shadow Ball pff, did nothing. 27%, so I know this thing is Eevee Light. The tailwind is gone. Um he's throwing out Shadow Balls. He's throwing out Shadow Balls. I don't have much for this thing. And since it's a fire type, I can now cannot Wisp it. And I can't really switch Halucha into a move here. It's got Reflect type and Shadow Ball. Um, Duraludon still probably takes a decent amount from a Shadow Ball. Right? Yeah, Duraludon still takes a lot. Oh, uh, this is a very interesting thing here. Is he still just going to keep... I'm going overheat again. Shadow Ball. Bruh. Oh my goodness. I've missed two out of three overheats now. <laughs> this is just comical. I'm going to Pain Split. You going to Shadow Ball me again? Crit me. That's actually better. Pain Split. Thank you. I get a little bit of health. Um, I need to switch something into a Shadow Ball. This is Eviolite. This is Eviolite Haunter. Um, Float Soul. Liquidation might still kill this if I can just, you know, Volt Switch out. Get back in the Float Soul. That's going to do nothing, but I just need to get back in the float. So Rotom's very crippled, which is a big problem because Nidoqueen kind of just runs train now. Float is now in. I guaranteed outspeed this thing. I guaranteed outspeed this thing. Um, Golbat's in. Roar brings Haunter back in, which is actually good for me because I outspeed it. 
Now, if he goes back into Golbat, he's going to take big damage. He might just go right back into Golbat. Ice Punch does not kill. Pain Split, that's aggravating. I missed the 50-50. Uh, now I just Liquidation, I think. Even if it, he switches that in, I just Liquidation. And if Jirachi comes in, I have to bring in Rotom. Or... The goal has been achieved, but that Haunter just crippled, essentially just crippled two of my Mons, which is a little aggravating, but I still have Tailwind mode later, and Golbat is also very crippled because it doesn't have its Eevee Light anymore. Amoongus is now in. Um, I don't know what he thinks Amoongus is going to do. I outspeed this with Roar, so I can essentially bring in anything I want onto this Amoongus. Actually, what I'm going to do... I'm going to switcheroo the Eviolite onto Amoongus now so it doesn't have... If it has Black Sludge, that actually might be a bad idea. Because... If it has Black Sludge, then it's just not a good idea. It's pro He's probably coming in the Toxic. Um, this still does work later. Uh, I could switch in Duraludon to take this Toxic as well. How much is Draco going to start doing to Amoongus? Defensive Amoongus is going to do like 40. Um, if this is Stomping Tantrum, <laughs> for some reason, uh, I could also just bring in Rotom. If this is a Spore. But I don't want Rotom to be this crippled. I think I'm bringing in Rotom. Giga Drain? All right. If he goes for a Spore here, I'm completely fine. I get a free Pain Split off now. He can try and Spore all he wants. I'm Chesto. I get a free Pain Split off. Because everything on his team is crippled. Everything on his team is full. Salazzo comes in. That's a free Pain Split. Give me my health back. Um, This could be a Toxic, but I'm going to Volt Switch right back out. Encore. Encore into Pain Split. So now he's going to get a Toxic off onto something. Um, he really likes Encore Salazzle. Now the question is... Is he going to Toxic this thing? Or not? He usually encores right into a Toxic, or he's going to, like, sub. Now, if this is a Toxic, I'm fine bringing in Halucha. Um, because it's not going to get the Eject button. So I think this is a Toxic. If it's not, I get to pivot into Mudsdale. Yep, it's a Toxic. Okay. That's fine. That's a Toxic. Now, is right now Tailwind play? I think if he brings in Jirachi, it's... I think this is Tailwind play. Because I Tailwind, and I get to go into... Does Mudsdale at plus two outspeed Salazzle? 272. No, it does not. But Gothitel should. 78. Yes, it does. Alright, so I Tailwind and go to Gothitelle here. So Golbat's in. So he might bring in his own Tailwind. In that case... So I got my own Tailwind up. So now I have Redundant Tailwind. And this thing is no longer... Fucking... Evilade. This thing just dies to Brave Bird, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it did not. It's still max defense. It is still max defense, which is interesting. Um, I'm going to U-turn.
Maybe U-turn was not the play. That might have been a little bit of a misplay. Um, you know what? The better play, actually, is to... He's going to U-turn onto Mudsdale and probably bring in, like... He's going to bring something in. Onto Mudsdale. He roosted. Interesting. Now, this is Banded Rock Slide. Alright. This is Mudsdale Banded Rock Slide on Golbat that is looking like max defense, max HP. This is no Evil Light, though. So, I'm going to have to reveal Band. He brought in Amoongus. My Tailwind's gone. His Tailwind is gone. Rotom's coming. Rotom comes back in. 100% here. Um, I killed him on. <laughs> this is a good battle, though. But the problem is I'm getting crippled and he is not. Sleep me. Yep. Fuck off, bitch. Fuck off, bitch. You can't sleep me. You can't sleep me. You can't sleep me. You can't sleep me. Free overheat. Free overheat. Bam. He's going to roost. He's 100% roosting. He's 110% roosting. Like, he doesn't die, and then he roosts. He's, he's been roosting on this thing this whole time. I don't see why I don't click this. I'm not saying it on this thing. His Tailwind do turn roost, and his last move was 100% defog. So... This last move was 100% defog. And he doesn't have rocks up yet. Or I don't have rocks up yet, and he's been switching a lot. I need to start punishing his switches. Um, This could bring in Jirachi, which I have Stomping Tantrum for. So I'm going to go... I'm going to rocks here. He's putting Tailwind up. My rocks are now up. He should die to a Draco. I drop a Draco here, 100%. Draco's about to get dropped. Well, I don't see why he stays in. Does he defog or does he U-turn? If he U-turns, he probably goes into, like, Nido Queen, which I still Draco. I still Draco. Either way. Anything gets hit for big damage. Amoongus is going to come back in at full health. It's got Black Sledge, so I know I can't switch Rue to that. U-turn. What's coming in? Nido Queen? Probably Nido Queen. Jirachi. Still takes a Draco. Still takes a Draco. With which I say to you, Stomping Tantrum, my good sir. Um, I'm just going to Calc it again. If this is like Scarf Iron Head, Stomping Tantrum is going to do enough. Unless this is Cosmic Powering, which is a problem. Iron Defense. Oh, no. Yep, fuck that. Fuck that. Mudsdale is coming right in. Mudsdale is coming right in and not dealing with this. This is gonna this is gonna baton pass fucking defense into something. This is gonna baton pass defense into like fucking Amoongus. So Rotom has to come in. What's it going to pass the wish into? Itself? He's got to go for an Iron Head flinch here.
Damn it. That's bad. <sighs> this is really bad now. Because... I need an Earthquake crit. I win with an Earthquake crit. I might get swept again. This might be a 5-0 loss, but I did kill him on. I need an Earthquake crit. I need an Earthquake crit. Please fucking crit. I need a crit. I just need a crit. I need a crit. You gotta either switch out or do whatever. I'm inner focus, so you can try and cheese me all you want. Something's dying. If that's Scarf Nido Queen coming in to sweep, I might lose. Crit, bastard. Mm, never mind, it's sword power. Um, oh. Haha. <laughs> oh no, it's negative six priority. Oh, that's sad. I think I lose now. Yeah, I lose now. Yep. I just needed to crit. I just needed to crit. Fucking set up stored power Jirachi. <sighs> I just needed a damn crit. Or a crit there. Anything. I get swept third week in a row. Fucking stored power Jirachi. Nothing I can do. Maybe Calm Mind killed that. I don't know. But I get whittled to fucking stored power Jirachi. Um, that's ass. That's disappointing. I killed him on, but I lost 5-0. Uh, I needed crits from those earthquakes. Uh, maybe Floats will should have come in to click Roar earlier. I thought he was going to baton pass, not be sword power. I, nah. I was playing well until that came in. But setup is the meta in this league. And I don't know if I just be pissed that people are running, you know, bitchy setup or if I should play against it better. I don't know. Like, I'm kind of checked out from this league at this point. I killed a singular Mon this week and lost 5-0, so my differential is now even worse. So, like, I've almost stopped caring. Uh... Which is a little disappointing, because it's just... I just keep getting swept. Because the meta of this league is just set up with some bullshit and win. Which isn't the most fun, but... Yeah. Um, This isn't even, like, comical enough for me to do another funny edit on the sweep. It's just, like... Eh. It's kind of a... Meh. Like, I'm just completely apathetic about this one because it's just another it's three weeks in a row now that people feel the need to just you know do that so yeah uh yeah um so we're now three and six with 
who knows how low of a differential. I mean, I killed five mons, so it would be... We're three and six with a minus 26. Um, which is bad. I did need a win. I, uh, capitalizing with a win this week would have been great because a bunch of people lost last week and I got a free with the buy. But that's not happening. So, yeah, it's a little upsetting. But, uh, it be like that, I guess. I don't know. Again, like I said, I'm very checked out for this league right now. Uh, like I'm in college and everything. It's just kind of, eh. Eh. Like, do I really care that much anymore with how things are going? I've been swept now. Let's let's look. I've been swept. I kind of got swept week one. Barely won seasons. Like, I got absolutely molly -whopped week four. Week five was a solid game, but I got cleaned at the end. Got swept week six. Got swept week seven. Got swept week nine. We are on a five-game losing streak. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, I've just been rambling. No one ever listens to these, but I'm just, it just feels wrong to me. It just doesn't feel right. It's, everything just feels off. I'm just kind of feel like a spectator in this league this season and just kind of there, but yeah. Um, I mean, GG's the clay. It was pretty even basically until Jirachi came in <laughs> literally the second Jirachi came in uh yeah maybe I should have willowed it no it wouldn't have worked because he had wish <sighs> yep you can't make this shit up uh so yeah that's week nine in all its anticlimactic glory. Uh, maybe we... And then watch me have to play so easy next week. Oh my god. Okay, I'll have to play either the stall team, Jack, meme with Kevin, or fucking Yeroon. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> I might lose four more games. Hopefully I can win one. The goal is now win a single game before the season's over. Uh, I killed a Mon this week, so that's a great goal. I killed the one Mon. One. <sighs> this is upsetting um but i'm gonna go see you guys next week or week 10 i don't know when this video is getting out i'll probably work on it during the week but yeah peace